I love talking about my former pupils. They meant a lot to me. You know, I was a teacher for 42 years. I'm very proud of that. This is about Larry Thompson. Who? Was he the one that used to form focus groups in the back of my class? He's still alive? Oh. Yeah, Larry and I, uh, we actually played on the football team together back in college, and uh, you know, he, he was a pretty good player. I wouldn't say he was great, but you know, he did pretty well with what he had. He was, he was always had this sort of artsy side about him. He was always getting distracted by the other team's colors, you know, like the uniforms and stuff, and, he, you know, we'd, we'd be in the huddle and Larry's head would pack up and go, golly, that is just an incredible color purple on that. Larry, Larry, don't worry about the colors on the, on the team. Just worry about the guys who are inside the colors. That's what we have to concentrate on here. I actually did an internship with Dr. Thompson during my time at Ringling College and he was amazingly influential. Um, you know, he was instrumental in getting all of the sculptures put on the intersections near the school, which was a huge improvement. Some say that he took it a little bit too far. There was one week when I came back from spring break, and instead of a bed in my dorm room, there was actually a sculpture. My roommate was gone too. Sculpture. Larry insisted on always being somewhere in the room other than where I wanted him to be with these focus groups. I remember one time he was all upset about having the crust cut off the sandwiches in the cafeteria, and he was really getting them worked up. <sighs> I'm afraid that class did not do well. Yeah. It wouldn't be uncommon if there were a few of us standing on the quad for him to just start a focus group. I remember one time I was in the men's bathroom and he tapped on my shoulder. It's a strange place to talk about modern art, but we got a lot done. That sounded weird. I, I knew Larry when he was back in the days when he was in a band called Larry and the Finger Painters. Not many people know that, so in fact I don't even know if they recorded anything. Yeah, Larry, Larry had this really weird idea. Um, he, wanted to, um, he wanted to take away the numbers, you know, how you got 82 on your number and stuff like that. Larry said, well, let's go like with symbols and hieroglyphs and, and stuff like that. And I said, you know, we're all, it's the 70s. Start of the game, you know, we go down and, and all of a sudden you hear from the, from the PA system, it's like, Yo, Winged Serpent is going long on the sideline, and that's when we said, nah, this just doesn't work, Larry. That was one of Larry's ideas. You know, it was properly motivated, but the execution didn't really work for our time. But I have to say, Larry gave me the best advice I've ever had, and I still use it to this day. He told me, the secret to creativity is hiding your sources. That was actually Albert I guess that just goes to show Larry is creative. Larry came to me in friendship on the day of my daughter's wedding and said to me, uh, he told me he wanted to build a museum, but he was having some problems with the uh, school board uh, people. So I went and saw these people and I said to them, if this project is shut down because of lack of funding, or if they have a problem with the building department, or if it was struck by a bolt of lightning, then I'm going to blame some of the people in this room, and that I do not forgive. Not many people know this, but Larry's mustache from the 80s was actually insured. Have you seen his mustache from the 80s? It was incredible. We had a semester-long course on it, Figure drawing classes were devoted completely to drawing Larry's mustaches. We went through a lot of charcoal that semester. I've heard that his mustache is buried in a vault underneath the school. Anyway, one day he was down at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 
And I remember being there when Steven Tyler walked in and, and he'd just written this, this, this groundbreaking song that was going to change the course of rock and roll history. And I remember Larry going up to him and saying, Steve, baby, you've got to really change that lick. I can't tell you what song it was, but he did. And that was the turning point in Aerosmith's career in rock and roll, all thanks to Larry. Huh? He had this incredible imagination. I would imagine Larry is, uh, he's probably in Tibet, to be honest. Ah, <laughs> oh, Larry Thompson. <laughs> I didn't drink till I had him for a student. He tried to buy the school's auditorium for a dollar. <laughs> Whatever became of him? <laughs>